Alright, uh, welcome to Bucknell Fellowship. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you so much for your giving. Uh, thank you uh, uh, for the support and your understanding of God's truth. Uh, as a teacher, it's very important uh, to know that your students are learning. Uh, that's very important. I was talking to my sister-in-law. I was asking her the other day, uh, do you ever get this, uh, ever see any of the students that you ever taught? And uh, sometimes she comes in contact with them through siblings and those types of things. But it's always a good thing to know the people's lives that you can touch, you know. And especially when you're doing this, because I always say the support is not just coming and sitting here, but the support is understanding the truth of God's word. Uh, that that's the that's the that that's the support. Uh, not only just coming and giving, but also just understanding. I, I, I'm teaching and. And the fervent labor and the study is so that you understand the truth of God's word. Not only so that you can uh, uh, understand who you are in Christ, but that you can live a better life. Uh, not so much better in a materialistic sense, but a better life according to God. And so that you can have fruit accounting towards your reward based when you get to heaven. And also that you can go out and share and preach to others also. Right? That's the purpose and the goal of the ministry. So I appreciate you all for coming uh, and your support. I thank those who are online. We get a lot of support from the followers online. So I uh, thank God for you all. Uh, well, I'm not, not going to be before you too long here. Uh, continue to pray for me. I had a little cold uh, this week, this past week. I had to miss a couple of days of work. You can see I'm kind of coughing and sounding a little congested now. But just continue to pray for me. Uh, uh, continue to pray for uh, my wife and family as well, also for Pastor L. Page and his family. Uh, and also, let's continue to pray for one another. Prayer just, prayer releases us of the burden uh, of the stressful things that we go through. We can give it to, we can give it to uh, Christ, knowing that it may not get better necessarily with our situation, but the joy that we have and the peace of God will surpass all understanding. So, uh, we could, uh, just continue to pray for uh, one another. And uh, we're going to get right into it. Go to 1 Timothy chapter number 6. Uh, I want to talk to you today about God, uh, gain or godliness. Hmm. Hmm. Gain or godliness. Uh, this is prevalent today because of the health, wealth, and prosperity uh, 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 gospel, I, I guess if that's what you want to call it, that's being preached, uh, saying that, uh, you know, if you do this, God is going to bless you with abundance of houses and money and cars and all these different things, and God wants you to be rich and all of these different types of things. But I, I want to ask a question, which would you prefer, gain or godliness? Which would you prefer, gain or godliness? First Timothy chapter number 6. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not what? Blessing. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and do what? Exhort. Exhort. Now, here we go. Look at verse 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to what? Godliness. Godliness. Now, understand what Paul is saying here. <clears throat> he said, if any man teach otherwise, and consent not to what? Wholesome words. Wholesome words. Now, now, first of all, he's telling, go with me to 1 Timothy 1 real quick. Well, well, hold, hold off before we get there. Hold off before we get there. Let me, let, me, let me explain this. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, 
Now, the wholesome words here are those words that are obviously opposed to what was said in verse number uh, one, which is the, the, the name of God and his doctrine be not what? Blasphemed, right? So if, you, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, that means he's speaking not of this doctrine, but he and not in blaspheming God, and, and a lot of it has to do with gain and prosperity and all these different things. Those things are not the doctrine of the grace of God, right? So understand what Paul is saying, right? Uh, 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 now, and then look what he says, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is Paul saying? He's telling us that the word that he preaches, because most people accuse us of who you're going to follow, Paul or Jesus. Mm -hmm. But understand, Paul is saying even what? Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is saying that what I preach and teach are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't follow Paul. We follow Christ. But Paul is our apostle. And he teaches us how to be, follow Christ. Because we don't know any man after. We don't know him after the flesh. We only know him according to the spirit. Mm -hmm. Paul is the only apostle that was sent in his, uh, uh, when Jesus was ascended into his uh, 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 heavenly glory already. All of the other apostles were sent while he was here on earth, right? So there's a different focus, there's a different message. But understand, when you listen to Paul, you're actually listening to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right? That's why he says, follow me as I follow Christ. Uh -huh. yeah, and he says, follow me as I am a follower of Christ, right? right? Don't just follow me as I'm following Christ because you... You might hit me on the wrong day. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> so, 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 but, but that's a good point. That's why, and Paul is the only one that can say that. He, nobody else ever said that back here. He's the only one that can say my gospel. Nobody else ever said that back here. Because he has a distinct apostleship. And the words that you need to be speaking, the wholesome words, even the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. If anybody is going to speak the words of Christ today, they can't do it back in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right? And, 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 and so if you prefer gain, which most preachers do rather than godliness, if you're following Christ according to this, then he says in Acts that you need to sell all that you have. I don't see anybody doing that. <laughs> right? So if you're preferring gain rather than godliness, and you're saying you're following Jesus, then you need to sell all you have. Because that was instructed by them to receive this earthly kingdom. And how do we know who are the chosen apostles for this dispensation? Uh huh. If that's the case. You're right. You're right. See, we're listening to Jesus Christ and the doctrine of this dispensation when we listen to Paul. Right? You can listen to the Lord Jesus Christ back here, but that doctrine was not to you. Right? So, so understand what he's saying there. And all of these things are according, look at this. And to the doctrine which is according to what? Godliness. This doctrine is not according to gain. It's according to godliness. So if you want to be godlike or have godliness, then it has nothing to do with gain. Right? Go with me to John 13. I don't know why it's so hard for people to understand that if Jesus said, Paul, what's the problem? We're not saying Paul is so great. He's just as great as who sent him. Hmm. Or, or what should I say? He's just, he has the ability of who, who sent him. Paul is a regular man like you and I. But with the God-given ability that he has, that makes him the apostle of the Gentiles. God chose that. Nobody else chose that. We didn't choose that. Look at John 13. Did I say Acts? No, John. John, okay. John 13. I, I'm in Acts in my Bible. John 13. Look at verse 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth, whomsoever I send, receiveth who? Me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that what? Send me. So if Jesus sent Paul, and you reject Paul and his doctrine, then essentially what you're doing is what? Rejecting. Rejecting Christ. And if you reject Christ, who sent him? God. Uh -oh. Right? 
Go to Acts 22. Acts 22, I'm going to read, I'm going to quote verse 9 while you're getting there. Acts, 20, uh, uh, Acts 9 and 15, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he, Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel, mm -hmm. right? For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake, right? So it's not that we're talking about Paul as if he's some great being, but he is our apostle. Is the apostle of the Gentiles. Acts 22, look at verse 21. So we just read in John 13 that Jesus says, who, who, if you receive whoever I send, you receive me. And if you receive whoever I send, you receive me, and you also receive who, who, he that sent me. Look at verse, Acts 22, verse 21. And he said unto me, these words are read in your Bible, right? Mm -hmm. That means Jesus said this. Depart, for I will... Send thee far hence unto the who? Yeah. Now, Jesus said, whomever I do what? Send. Yeah. Apostle of this sent one, right? So whoever, so he sent Paul to the Gentiles. So if you're a Gentile, you should receive Paul as Jesus sent him. Right. Right? Go to Acts 26. Look at verse 17. Look at verse, start at verse 16. But rise, this is uh, Paul, Paul's third uh, 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 testimony of his conversion. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast what? Seen. Seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. So, that, so, why, so why was Paul doing some of the things that he was doing in the book of Acts? Because those are some of the things he had seen. Water baptizing and all those things. Those are some things he had seen. But when God began to appear unto him and began to progressively give him more and more of the grace doctrine, those things he understood that I don't need to do anymore. Mm -hmm. Right? Look at verse 17. Delivering me from the people. Who are the people? Mm -hmm. Israel. And from the Gentiles unto whom now I send me. Send me. Go back to 1 Timothy 6. So there should be no question as to these people are talking about, well, who are you going to follow? Jesus or are you going to follow God? I mean, Jesus or Paul? Exactly. Well, I'm following Christ according to the apostle that he sent to me. Right? Paul. Pastor, if I'm getting too far ahead, are you going to go to 1 Corinthians 14? Uh, no, I wasn't, but we can say that. 1 Corinthians 14 and 37. If any man consider himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him, uh, let, him uh, uh, let him acknowledge that the things that I write are the commandments of the Lord. Right? So if you want to be spiritual or a prophet today, prophet just means to forth tell what's already written, then you need to understand who your apostle is. Right? So if you don't understand Paul, and you're talking about, well, I'm following Jesus, you can follow Paul all you want, then that means you're not spiritual. Because you don't understand the change of dispensation. Right? Because even back, even back here, and, and, and don't you find it odd? Who, does, who did Israel always refer to? Who did Israel love? Who? Moses. Moses. Right? The great Moses. The deliverer of the law. Israel, all, even Jesus said, do, do what? The things that Moses do the said. things that Moses commanded you. Even he said that. So it's not like, so, so would you tell me, well, who are you following back here? Moses or are you going to follow Jesus? <laughs> right? Even dating back to Abraham. Abraham, the father of all nations. You talk to a Jew today, Abraham is all everything to them. Mm -hmm. Right? He's all everything. 
But understand, there's certain people at certain times God sends to certain people. He sent Moses, the deliverer of the law. He sent David, the first king, uh, Saul, the first king. David, the second king, right? So understand, he sent people to, to, to get the people to follow him through them. God, God does his will with the work of man. Not that he needs to, but that's just the way he does it, right? So now today, his man is Paul. And it's the doctrine and wholesome words, even that of Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to what? Godliness. Godliness. God likeness. To be God-like, right? Understand when God created Adam, he said, let us make man in our what? <laughs> Image and what? Likeness. likeness. So now, he said, let us make man in our image. So the image, now did, 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 let, me, let me say this. Did Adam and Eve see God? Huh? Yes, they did. He, it said that he used to walk with them in the cool of the garden with them, but did they see God? Because it also says, Moses says that no man has, God says, no man has looked upon me and lived. So that tell you they didn't see God. So they didn't see God, but who did they see? The light. Jesus. Ah. You see that? Ah. So now, so, but he said, we're going to make man in our what? Image. So how did he create man? With arms, legs? So that was the image of him. You see that? He said, let us create, because it, there had to be an image of him. Because he said, let us create man in our, the, 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 the Godhead image. And what he did when he created them, and the, the, when he walked with them, spirits, when they manifest themselves, are men. When the spirit, uh, Psalms 1, uh, 1, 100 and 110, and also Daniel 9, 21, says when the spirits manifest themselves, it says Gabriel the man. Mm -hmm. But Gabriel is the what? Angel. Archangel. But when he manifests himself, Daniel saw him as a man. Right. You see that? So understand, when he got created him in the image, he became man. Okay. But also, he didn't only create him in the image as far as uh, 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 just uh, what we know as the image of man today, but understand it says his what? Likeness. likeness, right? The image is the outward thing. The likeness is the mind of Christ. What would Jesus do? The things that I can do, the, the inner, my inner man. See, he made, was Adam perfect? Yes. Yeah. See, so not only did he create Adam in the outer form of himself, but also in the inner man because he was what? Perfect just as God. So understand what godliness really is. It's not only to have an image of who God is, but it's also to have the what? likeness of him which is the spirit man on the inside right so now because man has sinned now that likeness is no longer likeness until now we can have the indwelling spirit of God there you go right right but the dwelling spirit of God is according to the what doctrine which because not all not all believers have the spirit dwelling in them as teaching them Right? All believers have the spirit in them, but not all, is, all believers have that word effectually working in them. Mm -hmm. Right? Understand that. And it's the doctrine which is according to godliness. Right? So understand that. Your, uh, uh, it's Paul's doctrine that builds up the inner man. It's Paul's doctrine that gives you the God likeness. If you want to be like Christ and you want to be more like, people say, I want to be Christ-like, then you need to understand Paul's doctrine. That is what's going to get you to be Christ-like. Paul's doctrine leads to godliness. Paul's doctrine does not lead to gain. Paul's doctrine leads to godliness. Right? Understand that. Look at verse uh, 4. He is proud. Uh, uh, let's read verse 3 again. If a man teach otherwise 
and consent not to wholesome words, even to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Now, if a man doesn't do these things, he is what? Verse 4. Proud. He is proud knowing how much. <laughs> so, you mean to tell me, all of these preachers that don't acknowledge the apostleship of Paul, they're proud? Yeah. All right. Proud knowing how much? Nothing. When you're filled with self-conceit, you know nothing. Go to first, skip back to 1 Timothy 3 real quick. This is it. This is. Look at first. Look at. Uh, now, this is the, the, the office of a bishop. Now, the office of a bishop. Look at verse 6. Not a what? Novice. Novice, lest being lifted up with pride, pride he fall into the condemnation of the what? Yeah. Yeah. Of the devil. So, if you don't consent to wholesome words, which Paul teaches, and the doctrine that Paul teaches, which leads to godliness, you're going to be first proud, knowing what? Nothing. Nothing. And because you're proud and it's self conceited, you don't know nothing, then you begin to put people back under the what? Under the law. Go to 1 Timothy 1. Look at verse 7. Verse Timothy 1, look at verse 7. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor what they what? Nor where they affirm. So if you don't understand who your apostle is, you don't understand his doctrine, who was sent by Christ, you don't understand the doctrine of God today, you're going to be proud, knowing nothing. Desiring to be teachers of the law, knowing neither what you say nor whether of you affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it what? Lawfully. Lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Paul's doctrine is made for a righteous man, not the law. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murders of fathers and mothers, murders of mothers for man slayers. So if you want to show somebody how sinful they are, use the law on them. Because that's how you use the law lawfully. Look at verse 10. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to what? Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is only found in Paul's epistles. Paul is the only one that mentions sound doctrine. Because there's do is there doctrine back here? Yeah. Yeah, that's doctrine back here, but it's not sound today because it's not for you today, right? So the sound doctrine is equivalent to wholesome words, right? So in order to speak wholesome words, you got to be able to speak sound doctrine. So in order to do that, in order to understand what godliness is, you have to understand who your apostle is. I got a question, Pastor. Uh -huh. So if somebody is preaching a law today, is that considered ungodliness? Yeah, that's not godliness today. The law is not godliness because the law is not made for a righteous man. Mm -hmm. So understand that all of these preachers that are preaching tithing are preaching the law knowing neither what they say nor whether they are affirmed. So what is that? Do they prefer gain or do they prefer godliness? Mm -hmm. that's a question. See, that's a question. That's a question. See, I would rather have godliness and have the mind of Christ, understanding the doctrine of Christ, and doing this dispensation than to have all these all this game. See, Paul had to understand it in his own life in Philippians 4 when he says that uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now, we use that as in all things, as in whatever I want to do, but understand Paul, before that, he talks about uh, uh, knowing how to be abased, knowing how to abound. But he's found how to be content in any situation he's in. So now, whether I'm high or whether I'm low, I know how to be a base. I know how to, I know how to be content. Mm -hmm. 
right? And that's we're going to continue to read that in First Timothy. He's going to say contentment. We'll, we'll get that. Go back to First Timothy six. And you notice that that these, when, when they, when they become proud, they become prideful and so arrogant, right? So arrogant to where they can't, they, they will down you because you say you're teaching from Paul's epistles and just talk all kind of things. I'm talking from experience. Say all manner of things about you. People who, you, who are in the body who are supposed to be so-called friends. Mm. Knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of what? Words. Mm. Words. Truth is not the center of what they're saying. They're doting about different questions that, that lead to, Paul says, avoid foolish questions because they lead to more Ungodly. ungodliness. Mm. Go to first, uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2, look at verse 16. So right after Paul is telling us, study to show ourselves approved, uh, unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He said in verse 16, but shun, stay away from profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more what? So when you're sitting up here and putting people under the law and doing all these things, talking about prosperity and all of this, you are leading people down the road to ungodliness. Because what leads you to godliness? The doctrine of the grace of God. Go back to 1 Timothy 6. <laughs> Doting about questions. And these are questions of controversy. Mm -hmm. Right? Saying something that the Bible is saying, but you try to put it in some, some word, a, 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 a way, in some type of scenario that all you got to do is just read exactly what the Bible says it says. Don't try to come up with some kind of analogy to make it seem like, you know, uh, 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 my sheep hear my voice. Well, well, do, well, we really know it says just what it says. You don't have to come up with some kind of, you know, some kind of explanation and some kind of mystical imagination about it. It says exactly what it says. You, all you got to do is read it and understand it. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, strife of words, whereof cometh what? Envy, strife, railings, evil surmises. All, when you do all this talking about nothing, this is what comes about. Envy, strife, railings, evil surmises, all these types of things. Uh, 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 look at verse 5. Perverse disputings of men of, co of what? Perverse minds. Useless disputes. Getting into the, the dispute about basically nothing. Right? Corrupt minds. Uh, 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 Anybody who is perverting the gospel, their mind is corrupt. They don't have the mind of Christ. And if they're adding all of these works to salvation today, they're corrupting the gospel of Christ. Paul says, if any man pervert the gospel of Christ, let it be a curse. Mm -hmm. Right? All of these preachers that are preferring gain over godliness. Look at verse, verse 5. Men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Now what does destitute mean? Huh? Nothing. nothing. Like a man on the street, a bum. He has absolutely nothing. Right? If you're living on the street, people who are homeless, they have nothing. They are destitute, right? He's proud, knowing nothing. He's destitute of what? Of the truth. He has no truth. He has destitute of the truth. Look at 1 Timothy 3 and look at verse 15. 1 Timothy 3, verse 15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest behave thyself in the what? In the house of God, the local assembly here, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the what? True. So how in the world... Is, are these preachers in, sitting in pulpits destitute of the truth but supposing that their house is the house of God? But they're destitute of truth. 
Because the house of God today should be the pillar and ground of the what? Truth. Truth. But if you're preaching gain and tithing and all this, you're destitute of the truth. Mm. Understand what Paul is saying here. So they're destitute of the truth. Go back to 1 Timothy 6. Supposing that gain is what? Godliness. See, God wants you. See, to be, see, God has everything. God wants you to be as He is. He's rich. He, he, he owns the world. He, uh -oh. God wants you to be like Him on the inner man, in your spirit, not in your flesh, in your spirit. Right? Gain is not godliness, but the doctrine leads to godliness. Why? Because the doctrine does not build up your flesh. The doctrine builds up your what? Your inner man. Right? And then your inner man begins to work against your flesh. And now you can do the things that you wouldn't really want to want to do, but you begin to do them because you have the spirit of Christ that is what? In you. Look what Paul says here. So for these people that don't that teach otherwise, if they don't teach wholesome words, if they don't teach what Jesus Christ is teaching according to the doctrine of the grace of God, according to Paul, they're proud, they don't know anything, Designed to be teachers of the law, they uh, 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 doting about questions and strife, uh, uh, perverse disputants of they have corrupted minds. They're destitute of truth. They they they're, they're telling you that gain is godliness. What does Paul say? From such do what? Withdraw thyself. Withdraw thyself. So, well, well, are you telling me that if my pastor teaches this, well, I'm not telling you anything, but what does this scripture say? From such, withdraw thyself. Right? Look at verse 6. But godliness with what? Contentment is great gain. Understand what he's saying now. To be content is just that, listen, if I just have a house... A uh, 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 house and something to eat, clothes on my back, I'm content. That's godliness. Why? Because I'm not conforming and worried about the things of the world, but I'm being transformed by the renewal of my mind. I'm building up my inner man. Right? That's what it's all about. But So what do you prefer? Gay or do you prefer godliness? That, now, that, don't just take that question in vain. That's a tough question. Tough question. Because you got bills to pay. You got things in this world that you like. Yes, sir. Right? That's a tough question. Which do you prefer, gain or godliness? Because gain is not godliness. Hmm. Right. Understand that now. Look at verse 7. For we bought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can do what? Care nothing out. Care nothing out. Care nothing out. It's certain. It's certain now. We brought nothing into this world. We can do what? Carry nothing out. Uh, go to Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes 5, and we'll end here. Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes 5, look at verse 13. There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail. And he begat the son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. All of the things that you're preaching to gain in this, these people are preaching health, wealth, and prosperity to gain in this life, you're not going to leave here with none of it. But what you will leave with is godliness. Your, your spirit. Right? Because God is going to reward you based on how you built up your inner man. It's not about all this, these worldly things. 
Now, is it, now, now understand, is it okay to have nice things? If you can afford it, sure, be my guest. But what I'm saying is that which do you prefer, gay or godliness? Right? This is a little bit off, but uh -huh. those rewards we're talking about, all those rewards basically will be worth them. As soon as we get them, we revert them straight back to the Lord, right? What's that? The rewards that we work that we get and being the seed, being the judgment. Uh -huh. As the body of Christ, don't we revert those right back to Christ? When you say revert, what do you say? Give them back. Serve. And you mean in service? Or Just thank you, Lord, here. Now, I, I, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure either. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, no, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. So you're saying once we receive our reward, we're going to give them back to him? Since we're all body, the body of Christ, it's all, we're all benefited in the same way. And we say, thank you, Lord, here. Here's. Why would he give it to us in the place? Well, well, now understand that when it talks about the crown of righteousness, not everybody's going to receive that. Because if we just talked about the reward of the inheritance. There's going to be different positions because there's going to be a governmental structure up mm -hmm. here. So there's going to be different positions based on the building up of the doctrine. So that's why I said the godliness is going to stay with you. What you built up, God is going to reward you for it based on that. Some people have not built up this, but they will receive the inheritance because they're saved. But their works are going to be burnt up, right? So, yeah, we're not going to, we, he's going to reward us based on what, He's already put in us. He's going to reward us based on up here. Now, we are, we are going to give it back in service. service. Yeah, in service, yeah. In service, we are basically because it's all his. And the ones that didn't get as much, are we going to say, hey, you know, give them more out of it. Well, then, this is, this yeah, is going it, to be it, it, done away with. Because in 1 Corinthians, he says, just as one star differed from another yes. star in glory, so shall we. So shall, we're going to differ up here. So I, I and, and like I, yeah yeah we're gonna differ up there. Paul says that in First Corinthians fifteen forty one, but we're gonna differ. But the difference won't be like here, like a natural difference where if I'm up here and I'm the supervisor and you're the employee, you know that up there it's gonna be in just a glorious time, right? So it, it won't be necessarily uh, we'll know, but it won't be a a I'm above you type thing. It'll be a glorious type thing, right? But, but, but because God, he's, he says that there's going to be, the Lord is going to give us a reward of the inheritance for those of us who serve him. See, not all of us are serving him because some of us, like Paul just talked about in 1 Timothy, are preaching that gain is godliness. So not all of us are serving him, but that doesn't mean that all of us are saved. And, and this time around, what's so glorious about it, then, is that sin will be done away with. So there will be no distortion in the love you know, in the discipline or whatever you may have it in heaven, there will be no distortion. Like down here, there's all, Paul is telling us this because there's distortion in the flesh. But that won't be the problem in heaven. So the, the reward of the inheritance will be to function in heaven. We're going to clean up the heavens and we're just going to reign, you know, for forever. And there won't be no purpose in, for all any of that. No matter where we're at. No matter yeah, exactly. where we're at. And that's the, and that's the hope of glory. To get, to see, the resurrection is just the first step. That's just the, the, the first step. Because that the resurrection takes away sin, the sin nature. Because we get a new body. Resurrected into our new body. So that takes that away. But just, just, ask, just ask yourself that question. Ask anybody you come in contact with. Which do you prefer, gay or godliness? Right? Think about it. All right, any questions? It's a setup. All right. All right. Father God, we thank you now for your goodness and your grace. Father God, we thank you for the simplicity that is found in Christ Jesus. Father God, we thank you that we can be, uh, have the God-likeness that you created us in, oh God. We thank you for the spirit of God, resting, your spirit resting and, and abiding within us and dwelling in us, oh God. And Father God, we just thank you right now that we can be close to you based on a simple belief, oh God. We thank you right now that we don't have to ask the Lord into our hearts. We don't have to come down to an altar. We don't have to pay a tithe. We don't have to ask for forgiveness. We don't have to do anything or any work of our own. But if we believe that Jesus died on the cross, he was buried, paid, he died, and when he was buried, he paid for our sins. And sin is no longer an issue in our life. And he rose again and was resurrected on the third day. If we believe that, we're saved eternally. 
and we thank you for it. Father God, we thank you right now that after being saved, we understand that there's an edification process. And that sanctification process is the more we understand the doctrine of godliness. And we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Touch those who are sick. Touch those uh, who are going through blessed uh, uh, marriages everywhere, oh God. Uh, uh, touch the, the, the body of Christ everywhere. Satan is trying to divide and conquer any way he can. Continue to strengthen us keep, us, keep us strong in the faith, and help us to continue to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you all for coming.